Yes. Now we are live with the incredible, the insatiable Jerome Shaw. Oh, how wonderful it is to see you, my friend. How are you? Welcome. Thank, thank you. Doing amazing. Doing amazing, Alice. Great to see you. <laughs> it's wonderful to see you too. Oh gosh, it's been a while, hasn't it, since we have gone live together like this. It, my goodness. It's been a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So for those who are unfamiliar with Jerome, oh my goodness, and you know, I only mentioned your name a couple of days ago at the end of Vipassana when I was sharing some inspiration that you shared with me with uh, some fellow participants in a Vipassana retreat that I had just concluded. And this wonderful man who is here in front of us on this camera, on this split screen with me, I tell you what, the amount of inspiration and wisdom that just emits from this wonderful soul. If you're not already following his channel, please do follow his channel at Jerome. So that's J R O N E Shaw. Yeah. Seriously. It's just, it's beautiful. It's poetic. And I'm so excited to be here with you. So wow. Thank you for suggesting this. Wow. Thank you for that introduction. <laughs> oh my gosh. You just, you know, it's so hard. Like you make my cheeks hurt when I when I'm with you. <laughs> like I'm trying not to. Just, Are you blushing? I just, just what do they say? Uh, she knows how to make a pro blush or something like that. What is That's that song? Betty Davis eyes. The Betty Davis eyes. Mm -hmm. The Betty Davis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my gosh see that that never it still hasn't left you it still hasn't left you 10 days of silence and 10 days of silence uh, 10 days of silence and it's still there like it, it might take a, a 10 more 10 days of silence for that to ever diminish and i think it would only grow so who oh knows who knows <laughs> <laughs> so you said it only will expand it will only grow i think so it's just one of those wonderful songs of the soul that just comes out and especially when I get to speak with you so you know I think you magnify it you're a magnifier in this world <laughs> you magnify the beauty oh my god gosh you're a charmer you're too kind you know it's I'd love to hear just you know from your experience because like you said you feel like certain things will only grow will only expand was there anything that that diminished? Was there anything that diminished once you finished? <laughs> yeah, so this is, oh. so I had the, I had the humble honor of participating in a Vipassana retreat with the IMC mm -hmm. here in Headington in Wiltshire. And I did not know what to expect. And everyone that I shared, which was not many, everyone that I shared with that I was going somewhat sniggered a little bit going, how are you going to remain silent for 10 days? And I went to, for many reasons, but one of them was to hopefully release what I felt was an attachment that I had, um, a behavioral attachment that many people have when we connect with other people. And then we feel really maybe overly connected. I don't know if you've ever experienced that where you have felt like, somewhat so focused externally rather than on yourself that you only see the other and you only see um, someone else and their well-being. And I am really moved to say that that is what has diminished was, it feels like, and I must say I am only one day out of Vipassana, but that has instantly diminished in a certain calmness and wholeness, a wholesome wholeness has become just in 10 days. So that is such a big question. And we jump straight into it with you as, as always, you just go straight there with the big questions. But, um, <laughs> well, you told me, I mean, you know, a while back, you always told me like, um, you know, you're like, you're like no foreplay, just straight in there. <laughs> Did I say that? <laughs> you said that. Those were your words. Those were your words. You said, no um, foreplay. Yeah. You snapped your fingers. You said, straight let's, in there. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, we don't need to talk about the weather. Like, 
you know, a Nietzsche, a Nietzsche, a Nietzsche. A Nietzsche, changing, changing. So wait, they, changing, changing. did they have the videos with Goenke with the with the discourse? Did they have those videos or did they have the we, audio? We had a disciple. We had a disciple, um, okay. Roger. Um, I think his surname might be Biscoff, but don't quote me on that. But we had a wonderful disciple. Um, a fabulous teacher who led each day of this Vipassana retreat. And what I've come to learn um, about the style of this particular place that I went, which was the IMC, it is all around, it's called the International Meditation Center. And they are actually international. <laughs> there, there are multiple um, centers in this trust all around the world. And what was really, really wonderful was the this teacher, he delivered um, the discourses um every morning and then another teacher every evening mm -hmm. and there was qu quite a focus on the anapana meditation mm -hmm. which i've come to realize i've come to learn isn't always as, as uh focused upon for so many days at certain other vipassanas so we did watch some videos to answer that question because i will just go here there and everywhere with that we did watch some videos but we watched them at the very end and each day it was it was all live it was all teacher was right there you know he was right there did you so did you watch videos when you did yours like how how did tell yeah me about that. so we did we did watch videos throughout we watched videos in the evening so every day we spent time with in front of the meditators there were two disciples as well there was a gentleman and a lady so half of the room was all female half of the room was all male yes. and it was like 30 30 of us there all in total it was about 30 participants but then when we left it was it may be around 27 or 26 of us finished and uh some a few of us left before before it was done because it, it you know for whatever reason it might have been too much or they might have mm. been you know it was a lot it was a lot for a lot of people yes. so you know, I, I'm so curious because, you know, <laughs> even in your bio, Alice, it, it says the, you know, the expanded, what, what? I just don't know what you're going to say. Oh, gosh, sorry. What? <laughs> I don't know what you're going to say, so I'm, just, I'm laughing in anticipation. <laughs> even in your bio, Alice, it says. Like, it says, so, so in your bio, you know, it's like the eternal student for, you know, for love and divine union, but it also... It talks about the, the expanded heart and the open throat. Yeah, yeah with an open throat chakra. <laughs> with an open throat. And you stress that open throat. The throat is open, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So the throat is, to have the that. The throat is open, but that doesn't mean to say you have to exert sound. Right. So to have that, you know, I mean, had you already gone this long without speaking in noble silence before? Yeah. Had this was a totally new experience. Completely brand new. Okay. And I had no idea what to even expect because, and I, I shared this with a friend today, is that I can completely understand the presumptions that one would have when you hear about a Vipassana retreat, mm -hmm. because I had those same presumptions. I was asking you, wasn't I? I was like, I was voice noting you like the day before going, hey, Jerome, what, you've done this. How any words of wisdom, any advice to help me kind of prepare myself. And you shared this incredible inspiration from your open throat. And I may be paraphrasing, so forgive me here, but you said something along the lines of mm, the person where it is like mental surgery, but you are also the surgeon, do not forget that. And you go deeper and deeper each day. And I was like, Ah, okay, so with hearing that, I was like, I can't possibly know what it's going to be like. And now this morning, I was speaking to a friend, and I say, it's, it's purely experiential. You have to experience it to really be able to even try to explain it. And even then, I don't think that you and I will be able to find the right words because it is such a deep such a deep and profound experience. But though I've never done noble silence before, my um, knowledge on Buddhism, because it's a Buddhist um, practice, 
my knowledge on Buddhism was fairly limited, you know. Um, we, I know the basics, but even then I found out that that wasn't really accurate, you know. And um, it really makes you contemplate the words that you speak. Yes. Do you know what I find? Yeah. 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 Like the economy of words. That was one thing that I read a while back from uh, Gandhi, his autobiography. And he talked about the economy of words. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I love that. And it's, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. I wonder, I wonder when you experience, have you done many Vipassanas? Have you done just the one? Have you just that one. For, just that for right one. now. They're trying to get me back. My friends are trying to, they're trying I to bring bet. me back in. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. I mean, I was saying to the, the wonderful volunteers and the staff there, I was like, gosh, this is something that was so profoundly moving and enjoyable, so nourishing and replenishing and fulfilling as well in many, in, in a way that you can't ever really be fulfilled. But in one of those ways that you just kind of go, I'm bringing myself back to me in a way that I've never experienced before through any other modality or practice. I was like, I could do this every month if my calendar permits. I'm like, I want it like back. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. <laughs> you know? They, uh, they're doing a, a trip in November to Burma, and I'm like, can I go to that? I want to do the Vipassana in Burma. That'd be amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I was going um, to ask you, when you did your Vipassana, did they um, stipulate about eye contact or not? So we didn't. So when we passed each other, because we did this in Lava Hot Springs uh, in Idaho. So it was in Lava Hot Springs and it was snowing. So it was freezing. Every day it was freezing cold. I didn't know it was going to be like that. So I was still in my sandals. And afterwards they called me, they called me Black Jesus because they were like, yo, this guy, whoever, whoever this guy was that was out there in the snow walking around with no socks. Walking on, walking on frozen water. Yeah. yeah like, like, who is this guy, you know? And it's funny because you, you really get to know people even in silence, yes. even in silence. Like, you know, in the dormitory, we were sleeping next to, you know, we had a, a roommate and, you know, they had their space, you had your space. But even though you, you didn't exchange any pleasantries, even, even though you didn't exchange any words for that whole 10 days afterwards, you felt like you knew who the, you felt like you knew yeah, them. You knew them. Yeah, yeah, you you you'd bonded. You'd, you'd known them in a in a way that you. Oh gosh, yes, it, yes. How was it when you started speaking at the end? Did you speak with your roommate? We started laughing. Everyone just started <laughs> laughing. It was like once you actually, started... I saw that video. I saw that video that you put out there. You yeah. were all just so exuberant with joy. We just bust out <laughs> laughing. <laughs> Once, once they, you know, showed us the sign that noble silence had been lifted, everyone just started cracking up. Like it was just a culmination and just the whole buildup of everything, you know, that we just finally like released and just let it all go. And it was, it was so, yeah, it was so liberating, mm. you know, to, to hear people's voices again, to see people's smiles. Cause like you were asking about, you know, well, it, when we would walk by each other on the road, you know, down to the meditation hall, to the dormitory, to the dining hall, like different places, we weren't really making eye contact, you know, because there was no contact. So, well, first of all, they, they, they stressed there was no, there was no talking, mm -hmm. no entertainment, no TV, no cell phone. They took our cell phones. Yes, yes, they took no, our cell phones. Yeah. No journaling, no writing, no you know, there was nothing to distract you mm. from yourself. So it was just you and you and you, yeah. you know, there yes. was no, no misconduct. So even though there were other people around, it was, just, <laughs> it was a solitary, you, it was a journey of you and you. Like you, you know, you were saying in one of your shows, damn, there I am. Damn! <laughs> Surprise you here. 
Yeah, there was no <laughs> escape. You could not run away. And I think it was, uh, I, you tell me what day it was for you, but I think it was day three or day four yeah. that it, it started to set in. And I realized, okay, there's no running away. Mm. Like there's no escape, yeah. you know, for, for anybody who doesn't know what we're talking about, like to sit in silent, like to sit in meditation for like 10 hours a day for 10 days. Yeah. For 10 days, for hours, hours. You're Literally hours. Yeah. I wonder like, do I have my schedule here? From the okay, routine? go ahead. Is, it, is yeah. it here? I don't have it with me, but I can recount it right yeah. now. We would awake at 4 a.m. Mm -hmm. and 4.30 to 5.30, that is your, that is the first meditation. Right. And that's, we would all, like you were saying, you'd all go to the meditation hall. Mm -hmm. Uh, the men and the women were uh, separate, right. um, of course. So we had about 30 women in the female side, and we had about 20 men, I would estimate, maybe 25 on the male side. So 4.30 to 5.30 in the morning was personal meditation. That, so that's no teachers there. You're just, you're in your own practice. Um, after about halfway through the, the week, the first week, some people started to take that outside, or they started to do that meditation in their room, in their dorm. But for the most part, we were all there. And then 5.30 to 6.30, we had the first discourse. 6.30 through 8, we had rest time and breakfast for those that were taking breakfast. I would use the opportunity to take a nap. <laughs> 8 a.m. until 9 a.m. was a group meditation. So that was led by the teacher and guided and held by the, the teacher disciple. And then a short break for 30 minutes and then 9 30 through 11 we had interviews and instruction so whilst so what that means is five at a time were being called up to sit in front of the teacher and this was the one time that you'd get to speak so every student if they chose to could share with the teacher how it was going and ask any questions but for the rest of the hour and a half you're meditating so still that's more meditation then we would have 11 until 1 for lunch. Uh, once again, I took that opportunity. I took the longer, the longer breaks for an opportunity to nap if I needed to. Because <laughs> I think as well, for me, it was um, getting used to there being so much time and space in the day. It was like three days in one. Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah. It was amazing. 1 until uh, 2. 1 until 2, 2 until 3. 1 until 2, I think it was personal meditation again. And then two until three group meditation, uh, a short break, and then once again, interviews and instructions only for those that it was the first time. Right. So 3.30 until five, everyone was meditating, and then those that were there for the first time got a second opportunity to speak for a couple of minutes, literally a couple of minutes, yeah. as you asked uh, a question to the teacher and heard his response. And then an hour refreshment break, so those that had returned to do Vipassana for a second or third or however many times would not take anything there um, because they one of the um, one of the the precepts for those that were returning were to not take any nourishment after noon mm -hmm. you know um, and then six until seven was second discourse so that's another method meditation while we're receiving the teachings of Buddha and then a half an hour break before the final group meditation and then that takes us to 8 30 rest sleep everyone will spark yeah. out seven hours sleep before we're up again for the next meditation and we start it all again for 10 days Jesus that, Jesus you have a great memory great memory Alice. <laughs> it was like, only yesterday Jerome <laughs> yeah but still like it's all there you know it's all there it just shows you like, it's such you know that you're able to <laughs> that you were able to re recount all of that, you know, all of that structure, all of that, just everything, just boom, 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 boom. Yeah. Every single day, the same, the it, same, but, but it different. Is. It was great though, but different, the same, but different, but it was such a great, um, it was such a nourishing structure. Like I found maybe just after the first day, cause the first couple of days, everyone's adjusting. No, no one in the regular world tends to be in bed at 9 PM, right? Or 8, 13, 9 PM. It's, it's uncommon to say the least. Right. Definitely uncommon to be awake at four, unless you're striving for an alarm clock to get to work for something. Mm -hmm. So to wake up at that time and then to get to 
meditate before the sun was rising and it was so beautiful because oh i would do my personal meditation and then for the last 10 minutes i'd go outside and i'd see the sunrise mm. before the morning discourse beautiful. and what a gift and ever like people started to do that and it was just so magnificent to observe you know it was so wonderful what was yours like do you remember yeah you know it was beautiful like the little the small moments that you had with yourself like like you said seeing the sunrise or i remember there were moments where when i was alone and i was watching or just waiting nearby the door for the them to ring the bell because they would yeah. ring this huge the bell gong. yeah <laughs> for like uh for the next meditation yeah we were waiting there would be times where i would look out and i would see like i could see like the the particles in the air there were times where i could see it and i was like oh my gosh and i was i couldn't talk about it you know i couldn't tell anybody what i was witnessing but i was like i was witnessing the prana you know in the air yes yeah. and for someone such as yourself as well who is so well versed in prana if if i may say so and it's beautiful to be able to see and see how the atoms encapsulate life force mm -hmm. just in the air glistening like yeah. teardrops from the heavens you know it's just like they they're just it, it's just exploding with this love through the air and it's, and i may be like over <laughs> over articulating a little bit what what we're trying to describe here but when you are releasing the need to speak out loud and you are observing the inner workings of self all of your senses seem to heighten and that was one of the things that my friends at the course they were saying after they were like my sense of taste was just huge like everything danced in my mouth when like for everyone that was eating something they were like the flavors were just bigger than they could have even anticipated and they could smell better and hear better and you know so for you to see all that that's that's wonderful to hear yeah you know? it's very you know everything was heightened you know everything really gets it's like somebody turns on that that tv setting where the brightness or the hue or the color you know like they just <laughs> they just turn that dial up and everything mm -hmm. just has a brighter exposure it's just like a colorful you know just very vibrant and it brought that out of everything mm. and especially when we left i mean for me when when we left everything was a lot louder a lot you know a lot more visually stimulating a lot more auditorially stimulating a lot more you know you you saw certain things that your subconscious was filtering out before now yes. your your conscious mind is seeing everything that you were avoiding or or that you were kind of deleting that was not essential for the mind at like, the time now it's like the cash <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> too many cookies yeah. yeah you know now all the cookies are off the cookie you know yeah <laughs> <laughs> Jerome took the lid off the cookie jar. <laughs> he took them off. He popped it off. And now all the cookies are everywhere. You know, everywhere you, everywhere you look, there's a cookie. So, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm, you know, I'm interested because, you know, for different people, it's like you said, it's it's very individual. The experience yes. is going to be different for everyone. Yes. So for for you what would you say was was one of the most challenging aspects of it you know one of the and maybe you can recall like the day that you know something came up for you and you really had to not not like power through it but you really had to like mm. you know it was it was a long day like you said you yeah. gave a perfect description Alex you said some days felt like 3 in 1 yes yes yeah. yes especially if you napped in between like i did <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think, you know what, I think you're right. It was probably around day three or day four. Okay. Um, let's see. There was a Tuesday. Um, I was a little bit later on though. Okay. I th I had a couple of, I had a couple of moments, um, where it was one of those where I really had to allow myself, permit myself grace, Okay. you know, for the human experience. Yeah. And 
it's fascinating because they, they ask for anyone that already has any type of spiritual practice, whether that's meditation, yoga, doesn't matter, qigong, doesn't matter. Anyone that has any previous practice, they must be willing to release everything that they have ever known mm -hmm. and come as a, as a blank canvas mm -hmm. and only follow the instruction. And so I found myself a couple of days in realizing with the first meditation technique that Goodness, you know, I teach meditation, mm -hmm. you know, I offer meditation, I offer visualizations, I offer meditations, I, I do many, many of these things as service. And yet at the same time, I've never truly meditated. Mm -hmm. That was a massive shifting moment because I was like, wow, we're a world full of people that say they meditate every day, myself included. And I realize in my meditation, I'm not actually meditating. Mm -hmm. Not now having gone to a Vipassana and experiencing what it is to truly focus the mind. And this is what I felt. Okay, I wonder for you as well. But this is what I found is after how to how to say I I connect very telepathically with people. Thought to thought, heart to heart. I feel, I hear, I speak telepathically with a few people and so one of my pondering was before i arrived was how am i going to sit in a room full of 30 people that may have uh, may have come to a vipassana to release some emotional baggage to let go of some things to move through some stuff how and i get there and i realized when i the first meditation after learning the anapana technique i was like I close my eyes and I feel like it is just me in that room. And that was a massive moment. But then it, it brought rise to aspects of my identity, my ego, my, my mind that somewhat struggled with it. It got really chatty. Like it, there was a particular like stream of imagery and um, almost like daydream or fantasy or whatever you want to call it that kept wanting to percolate the mind. Mm -hmm and distract from the breath and the object of breath and the touch of the breath right. and day three was probably the most ch challenging mm. where i struggled to bring back from the daydream that i struggled to bring it back to the touch of the breath even though we had all the tools yeah. and, and so in that moment i took myself out of the room and i just allowed myself a little bit of grace and and tried yeah. again but that's why it's so that's why you know people say 10 meditations nine meditations 10 hours a day that seems really intense but it was so healing mm -hmm. because it brought these parts of my mind that i had no conscious awareness that were floating away creating daydreams and visualizations and even connections with others it brought it right back in and I can't even find words to explain what that feels like. It is only experiential. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Thank you for what? sharing that. Oh, you know? no. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that, Alice, because, you know, as you recount that, like, um, I had similar times where, you know, I did want to go into fairy tale land, yeah. you know, and it's like my mind just, there were so many things that, are in there like it's all in there it's all, you know all in there. it's all in there so like all the images the movies the videos the you know the times that we stared at screens the times that we you know or that we might have you know certain trump uh traumatic experiences that we yes. maybe uh pushed down or suppressed or really put all the way down in our psyche you know it, things would bubble up and find like might make their way to the surface mm -hmm. So when you say that, you know, as a teacher of meditation, as a guide of meditation, as someone who utilizes these vibrations, and now saying that you never felt, you felt like you never truly meditated. Yeah. What do you feel like true meditation is now coming out of this? What is it? True meditation is that single point of focus right it's it, it it's total complete immersion mm. in that one point but you know even still being asked that question my answer seems insufficient you know it seems mm. inadequate because i feel like 
it's not something I can answer yet because I don't even know. Okay. You know? I feel like if I was to even attempt to answer it, it would be a false truth or a half answer. Mm. And this is why, I, and I have the utmost respect for all levels of teachers. And once again, you know, I, I fall in that category. And yet at the same, same time, you can only really be a leader or a teacher if you're the eternal student. Wow. And recognize that you will never really fully know because in, in order to speak it because it is only experiential for me in my interpretation is that it's an experiential thing so I can't even describe what meditation is at this point because I'm going if my mind is not present within my body then it's not out of the seat of my soul it's not at the point of my, my creational abilities it's it's subject to condition and influence and volatility and instability mm. so until i can practice continually enough you know i think that's the whole human experience but that isn't isn't that what awakening truly is according to buddhist teaching right wow, wow. what about you I, I i would be curious to hear how you would yeah. like to express that. yeah that is it's profound you know what you're saying is profound you know and i i agree like with the even as as you were speaking alice you know catherine catherine glenn is here and she said ikagra one pointed mind mm. one pointed mind ekagra so you know that single pointedness that that focus that we're not used to having i know i wasn't used to having yeah. definitely not you know it kind of went against my natural way of being for a long time. I wasn't used to being the one to focus. Now, I also played into the story that I couldn't focus. That was a narrative that I played Ooh. into when they kind Ooh. of, you know, with the with all the labels that were on the table, you know, not becoming so willing and able, right? You know, with... <laughs> there's that poet again. I love it. They're like, no, you have this, you have this, so you can't focus. You have this, yes. so you won't notice. You have this, so this, you know? Yes. So All the labels we give ourselves to excuse ourselves from whatever it is to evade, you know? Right, right. So you, so it's like the labels were kind of, um, it's like you were taking off the Band-Aid, mm. you know, to heal the wounds, you know? Like taking it off, like it's, it's okay. You can take it off, it's good, you know? And... Sometimes it hurts when we rip off that Band-Aid. Mm. It's like you rip it off and, ah, you know, but, but it needs to be done. You know, you got to trust that your body can, can do what it needs to do, what, it, what it's able to do. Yeah. Oh, that's a beautiful way of putting it. Because, you know, so for those that are a little bit new to Jerome, and I'm going to share this is the first time he's heard me say this, but this wonderful man has taught me so much about trusting the body and knowing what the body is mm -hmm. actually capable of. And that's just in some of his choices in life and observing and watching and being inspired by him. And to hear you say that, Jerome, is actually is very, very moving because it, it truly is you are learning what you are capable of in the body mm -hmm. and you know you speak of the the one-pointed mind you know and on that focus and it's and it's funny because even in a lot of the meditations all the visualizations i should say in the visualizations that i that i offer we always bring that attention to the heart so here's me thinking on day one i'm like okay well how hard can it be to focus on three objects the in breath the out breath and the touch of the breath how hard can that be every meditation i'm focusing intently upon my heart space right me and everyone else that's listening to that visualization that's what i do day in day out and then i'm like oh my goodness it's actually really a lot more challenging to focus on the touch of the breath without it moving, without it focusing. And, and I understand why I feel, I understand why they teach that, you know, because it's the one thing that whilst you're living in your body is the one thing that will remain constant. You know, everything else is subject to condition and change, but the touch of the breath, you're always going to be breathing whilst you're alive.
time. And I found that really hard at, at times. And I was like, wow, I wasn't expecting that. I'm like, okay, well, you know, I can hear it. I can feel it. It really surprised me. Mm-hmm. It was really humbling in a really beautiful way. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's five, almost too five simple. Five days of that as well. Yeah. It's almost too simple. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, it was. It, it literally, three things, three objects. That's, that's it. Breathe in, breathe out, a touch of the breath. <laughs> how many days, um, how many days in your Vipassana um, was spent on solely focusing on Anapana meditation. Yeah, so I believe like the first, we did the first few days where it was like one section and then slowly we started to separate and do like a body scan. We yeah. did like a body scan where we went into different areas of the body and we would rest our awareness and our consciousness and just observe the sensations. And then there was a certain point where they called it Aditana and they called oh. it the, the strong sitting. And that was basically Aditana. They said, you just don't move. And mm. I think that was after day three. So that was like day four all the way to, to the end. It was like, okay, now when you sit, you don't fidget, you mm-hmm. don't, you know, scratch, you don't itch, you don't, you know, lift up. You don't, you don't crack do your back. No, nothing, nothing. You just sit. <laughs> And you just sit, like, because, I mean, I don't know if there were people where you were that were layering and layering and double decorating, like, there were pillows and cushions and tables and fortresses. Yeah! Yeah. (laughs) Absolute fortresses of, like, cushions and floor seats and blankets. They were stacking (laughs) Stacking it like pancakes, like pancakes, like one on top of the other. They were putting them on top of the other. And I noticed (laughs) at a certain point, because, you know, the teachers, the the disciples, the ones that had been there for so long and had volunteered their time to to come assist us, they were on these thin little tiny, (laughs) tiny little platforms, like not even, like their skeleton was right there on the floor, you know? And they're sitting, sometimes they're sitting for two hours. Yeah. You know, not only for the beginners, they're sitting through the beginners and through the intermediate and beyond. Yeah. Like they're sitting wow. the whole time, like wow. statues, like statues, Buddha statues, like just <laughs> Aditana, you know? And you look around, the, you see everybody, different people have these multi layered, double decker, triple, you know, pillows, and they're just trying to get into the perfect, <laughs> perfect position. <laughs> Fluffing the pillow, you know, like, like, let me just, you know, just like halfway through meditation, it's like, yeah, yeah, like, like just trying to sit down perfectly and make sure everything is right before they embark on this next meditation. And at a certain point, I realized when I witnessed them, like, it's, it's not the pillows. That was one of my revelations. One of my revelations, Ellis, was it's not the pillows. It's not the platform, it's the perception. It's the yes. mind, yes. you know, it's the mind. Like, that's it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Practicing Gratitude 74 said they were trying to fortify their sin. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> during, if I put the strength in at the start of the session, I will have the longevity to go the distance. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so was it, was it like oh. that in your meditation hall as well? Oh, you bet. You know what? I was going to ask you this just before you started sharing that. I was like, everyone had pain come up, right? You know, you're focusing on the breath. You're focusing on the touch of the breath. Yeah. And, um, and then the body starts to speak. And um, I found it really fascinating. You know, after a couple of days, I had no pain, you know, because it's not normal for many people to sit in a position for such a long length of time, numerous times through the day. And so when I initially sat down, I was like on my hips and my knees and my shoulders and my back, you know, just like, mm, you know, and after a couple of days, I found that that had fully released and I was able to sit, but still I wanted to move. Mm. Now, our Vipassana was, I think, a little bit more relaxed than most other Vipassanas. And our, our teacher, he was sharing that, um, you know, the, the great teacher that founded 
the actual the IMC, you know, they were, he was saying, you know, awakening is achievable for the layman. Mm -hmm. Right. And if you translate directly what the Buddha was saying, it's, you know, having the right efforts, not perfect, not this, that and the other. So he said, so he, he permitted us if we really needed to move, really needed to then move, but not unless you really needed to. So you're still holding that position where it was possible to do so. And you're pushing yourself in your mind. But as you said, it's all perception. Yeah. And that was really cool to observe because people obviously, you know, you're, you're bringing parts of your mind back to yourself. You're less sewing them, you know, you're less sewing them back to you that have just gone out here, there and everywhere. And with that comes the body's expression mm -hmm. of that reunion. And the body only knows how to speak in sensation right. right so people experience pain oh i've got a real pain in my neck blah, blah, blah. anyway yeah. i found it really interesting because yes there was the cushions the fortresses the I'm trying to prop money up this way this way i found myself i was like that person's got like six cushions i'm gonna try it out i'm like i'm gonna see what that's all about i'm like oh it's, this is quite nice okay and then i'm like two meditations later oh no i think i I just prefer to sit on the on the flat yeah. one again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really. oh, it was it was really cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, and at the very end when we had our final group meditation and and we offered merits and and all of that, we we were all welcomed into the one space. So still, the men and the women were segregated. The um, but we were all in this one the one room so that we could essentially do this together. So we're much closer together. And because of how the cushions were like um, lined up, someone had moved all the cushions that were near my spot, which was about literally about six or so cushions. And they'd put them all there. And I'm like, well, I'm not gonna sit on it like that. The people behind me won't be able to see the teacher. So I just got rid of them all apart from the one. And one of the, one of the long, longest standard volunteers, she's been there decades, she was like, oh, Alice, you can have cushions, you know, it's okay. And I'm like, no, 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 it's fine, it's fine. You know, this person won't be able to see, because at this point we were allowed to speak as well. So it was literally the last couple of hours. I was like, no, no, it's okay, thank you though. She was like, but your knees, your knees. I'm like, you know, my knees are really strong. They're good, my body's good. It was such a shift from when I arrived there, bodily, you know? It, even like, I'm sat on this chair right now and I'm going, okay, I've not done an Instagram live for ages. I'm trying to get like the right height here. I'm going, oh, I should have stood up. And I'm like, I can't really rearrange the camera now, so it's fine. And I'm going, I'm sat on one of my feet and I'm going, oh, it's really numb. And I'm just going, I need you. I need you. I need you. Changing. It's fine. Thanks. It's fine. Yeah. And then it's like, it's numb and then it's not numb and it's numb and then it's not numb. And it's, it's just fascinating the observation level that you have of your own right. self, you know, or your body. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful analysis. <laughs> like the, the beautiful <laughs> breakdown, you know, what you just said, Alice. I mean, it feels like when I left there, what you just now said, that realization, that revelation is mm -hmm. one that I feel like so many people don't come to i i certainly hadn't been aware of that for so long in my life just that you know we hear the cliche like this too shall pass yes you know nothing is permanent oh God, goosebumps hearing you say that right <laughs> but it's like when you when you experience that on a on a mm -hmm. just on a physical level on a mm -hmm. just the total realization of it on that on that level where you realize it's just a sensation. It's, just, it's, it's gonna go away, it's, it appeared, mm -hmm. and eventually it's gonna disappear. Yeah. You know, it came up, it's gonna fade away. And it's like that realization is so, we, we a lot of times I used to perpetuate the pain by trying to fight the pain. Oh. You know, oh. By trying to, um, you know, a mosquito bites you, you swat at the mosquito, and then now you're scratching it, and it's making it worse. It's making it worse. <laughs> it's and the, the body's worst. like, oh, I've got his attention. Right. Let's, keep, uh, let's keep making it itch. Right. It's, it's festering. <laughs> it's, it's 
festering. It's, it's making it worse. It's going to prolong it. It's going to be even worse. It might even get infected. If you keep continuing to scratch that itch, it's going to keep going. So yeah. when you just let it go, like there was a beautiful moment where we were in front of the teacher and the women were with the lady and we were with the gentleman. And, you know, he was such a cool guy, real tall guy, yeah. silent, very, very silent, mm. like a like a gentle giant. Yes. And our teacher was similar. I wonder if he was like the same one he just teleported. <laughs> <laughs> <She's> like, <laughs> he went from here to there. He's everywhere. Yeah. You know? I mean, for real, he travels a lot and does a lot of this. So it wouldn't surprise me. He speaks like 10 languages as well. I, you know, I, I won't doubt it. I won't oh, doubt it. Gosh. So we were sitting in front of our teacher and, you know, he was asking us like, hey, you know, he said, hey, hey, Jerome, how are the sensations? And I was like, oh, you know, it feels good. You know, it feels blissful. Like, like one of the other guys to my left, he had just said, you know, that it was ex excruciating. Mm. You know, the pain was unbearable. It was almost to the point of like, just agonizing, you know, really just really pain in his body. And it just would not go away. It just kept on persisting. And so the teacher just kindly told him, he was like, okay, just, you know, continue to be aware of that, but understand that, you know, this will pass. It's just sensate. It's going to change, you know, it's going to go away. And then he asked another person like, Hey, how are the sensations? And the guy had the total opposite. He was like, Oh man, it's blissful. It's euphoric. It's amazing. I feel like I'm in heaven. This is just beautiful. Like just everything is wonderful. And the teacher was like, he just nodded and he said, okay, just, you know, just, we want to just be aware that this will also change. Yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. We had the same thing that it was so wonderful. There's, there was a few really, I mean, everyone's a very, very beautiful yeah. soul there, but there was, there was one, there was one beautiful being who, um, kept experiencing a lot of very, like the, the, her, her mind and her body kept creating mm -hmm. a lot of, um, blissful, uh, energy sensations. Right. right? And, you know, from, my perception from my awareness, uh, other practices would say, oh, this is this, and this is this, and that's the experience that you're having going through Vipassana. I now know the mind is just creating a distraction. Right. So that was a really interesting thing, but it was the exact same thing. Every time she would bring up, um, every time she would bring up a blissful sensation, the teacher would be like, mm, return to the touch of the breath. Mm. That is not the focus. Return to the touch of the breath. Or like, don't stay on it. Or if it was a passenger and the body scanning and everything like that, it's like, but do not stay there. Yeah. Move, move, move. You know, I need you, I need you, I need you. Changing. 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 Don't let it control you. Yeah. Release it. No attachment. Changing. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's not what a lot of people want to hear. They seek the blissful they seek the euphoric they seek right. that and that was a major revelation for me mm -hmm. is how so many of us and, and we are conditioned and programmed that way of course yeah. it's human nature so there's no other like there's no bearing to what i'm saying other than an observation of such but how as humans we do want to seek and pursue the blissful, the euphoric, the high vibrational states, the 5D, some would call it, the whatever you want to call it. But really, you're seeking a condition and attaching to it. You're seeking a sensual pleasure and desire that inevitably will pass and will feed an aspect of self that is not going to serve you, it's going to cause chaos, because you're not observing the Anicca. You're not embracing the in nature it was there's so many aha moments that I, I don't think i can actually really articulate but i wonder if uh i wonder if you had similar experiences with that yeah. yeah and that's a beautiful one because just that right there i mean the tendency and the propensity of people to run towards pleasure yeah. and run away from pain yeah. you know we're trying to to avoid this mm. while also trying, we're seeking this, we're avoiding this, we're escaping this, and we want more of this, right? Yeah. But it's like both of them are gonna change, you know? Yeah. Both of them won't be the same. So it's like not trying to 
you know, lose ourselves in one or the other, but just remaining in, yeah. And what I love as well is that, and you, and you know, Jerome, you know how my mind kind of wants to play connect the dots and, and things like that. What I really loved about kind of this, this practice was with all the exploration of other avenues, of other cultures, of other religions or spiritualities and practices, various things that sometimes I even perpetuate, you know, and, and share. It's fascinating to see the similarities of what's being said, just spoken in a very different way. So even with saying, you know, don't change chase the desire don't you know don't don't pursue that people run towards it and they run away from pain or suffering or, or whatever it is you know they run away from the sensation that they don't want and say it's bad and go towards another one that feels better and says it's good <clears throat> it's funny because like even if you listen to someone like you might listen to abraham abraham hicks or bashar right and they would say okay we'll follow your desire but not to the point where you're attached to it like both of them would say you need to be unattached to have no resistance mm. you know and when i think about anicca and yeshua or jesus for example and the miraculous healings that seem evident from what's written and remembered about him is that that's exactly what he will have done was anicca he would have known the instant change and known it so well that he was able to help another focus in that way onto that one-pointedness it's it was fascinating for me even though i'm sure <laughs> i'm sure the teachers would disagree perhaps but <laughs> it was fascinating for me for my mind to kind of want to play that little uh song of a storyline you know to kind of go mm, there's a little bit of similarity here maybe a little bit here and yeah. you know exactly detached from the outcome yeah 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 can that's you just either. sit with it can you just sit with yourself yeah can you i don't know that anyone can like after that experience i'm like i don't know anyone can like did you have emotion come up i wonder yeah I mean, I mean some of the greatest i mean some of the most profound people throughout history you know ancients you know they've been saying the yes. same thing mm -hmm. You know, like that one of the hardest things, the most difficult things for anyone to do is just to sit by themselves. Yeah. You know, just to be with themselves mm -hmm. and like deeply go into themselves. Like, I mean, it's, I think we live in a time period where we've never had more ways of, of escaping ourselves. Yeah. Like, yes. you know, people, we say that we're bored, but they say that, you know, boredom doesn't really exist. I mean, in this day and age, what is boredom? You don't have time to be bored. Like, you don't have the, the you know what I'm saying? Like, there's so much to occupy the mind that you don't, there is no room for boredom. But mm -hmm. what it also taught me is that boredom, boredom is beautiful. You know, like, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> Let yourself be bored because yeah. that's there's beauty in boredom. Like there's there's magic in the mundane. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. there's there's so much there that we are not aware because we're always here or always there. <laughs> you know, like we're everywhere. The mind is everywhere, so it's never right here, mm. right here. And all of our fears, where are all of our fears? They're not right here. Mm -mm. They're not right nope. here. The nope. fear is in the future. Yeah. Right. The depression exactly. is in the past, right? You bet. You Everything. bet. Yeah. So. And the boredom is in the scatteredness around it. Yeah. <laughs> when you can't be here, you know, you're only bored when your mind isn't is isn't present. You know. Because right. <laughs> oh. isn't it? Isn't it though? If like people say they're bored, they're scrolling on their phone. Yeah. You know, they're watching shorts and reels and shorts and reels and blah blah yeah. blah. Yeah. You know, and, their mind isn't there. And that's conditioning too. Just mm. think about the words like watching shorts and reels shorts yeah. and reels like yeah. we're shortening our attention span mm -hmm. we're reeling it into their yeah. like now this is our attention span they say that you know a goldfish is at least i don't know seven seconds they say now the human being is like six seconds <laughs> <laughs> it's say, so yeah, true even a goldfish it's so true <laughs> it's so true yeah. and oh goodness yeah. Oh, Nabia is here. Hello, darling. It's good to see you too. Do you yeah. see the comments, Jerome? Yeah, yeah, I can, I can see it. 
I can see it. So Nabi has, I mean, you know, Alice, Nabi has been saying it for years. Mm -hmm. I'm sure she's frustrated with humanity. I'm sure she is frustrated. <laughs> she's had it up to here. She's had it, you know? She's like, just sit down and just sit, you know? Yeah. Like, so, sit and be. Like, sit with yourself. She's been saying sit with yourself for mm -hmm. years, you know? That's a constant message. From the first time I, I've known her from our first conversation, that was the message and it's never changed. Yeah. It's always the same, like sit with yourself, mm -hmm. you know? And so, you know, it's something that you don't realize that you have the remedy, mm -hmm. you know? The remedy has always been within you and you realize it the more you continue. Yeah. You know? Hey, do you have time to keep going for a little bit? Because I, I want to ask, I want to, I want to pick your brains and I want to discover some of your thoughts a little bit yeah. more. I just want to yeah. be conscious and respectful of your time here. Appreciate that. What is, what is time? What is what time? Is I mean, you like, when you, what are the things during Vipassana, you get to know time a little bit differently, right? Time is a little bit different in about <laughs> 10 days. <laughs> oh my goodness. You know, the only thing I have ever been able to compare that to um, was pranic feasting. Okay. Like, like, through pranic feasting, time, very different than to, very different. you know? Yeah. Very different. And, oh my gosh. Do you know, I loved how time would dance through the person this week. You know, there'd be some times I'd sit down and it'd be an hour sitting and it'd feel like it'd only been five minutes and it was done and I'm like, oh, I'm not ready for it to be done and then there'll be some that were literally once again an hour maybe even a little bit shorter if we took a little break in between mm. and i'm going oh my goodness is it not over yeah. yet yeah. there's only only so many times i can like fortify my breath here to bring my attention back and like rub my ears and you know wake myself up <laughs> oh and i'm like whoa i'm really resisting something at this point in time yeah i'm really resisting something but I was, I wanted to ask you, I'm, I'm curious a little bit here because one of the things that the teachers shared with us is, you know, they keep the meditation hall the same temperature. They keep it consistent. They keep the food that incredibly nourishing. The, the schedule is same. You know, the, the, the food is vibrant. It's colorful. It's organic. It's vegetarian. It's wonderful. And, you know, he was saying, Saying that it, it has to, in a Vipassana, you have to have these constants so that the only thing that is really changing, you know, is, is your mind, is your experience in your mind and the meditation. And, but, but for someone like yourself, because I know that I found this, I was so full from the meditation. I got there Friday evening and we had a group meditation. We learned the first technique. And then by the Saturday morning, oh, I was full on meditation. I was full on meditation. And I know this is perhaps something maybe we shouldn't quite talk about because it is expected that people eat. But if that is not normally your genetic makeup now to consume solid uh, or cooked foods, you know, I was just wondering how you found it in comparison to what your day to day life was with all the meditation, all the nourishment, because I felt so nourished. I was vibrant with energy, you know? Wow. Yeah. So you, you're saying, how did I feel the, the nourishment of did the you, meditation? Yeah, so? yeah, I mean, did you, yeah, that, and did you, did you even sleep? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I slept. Yeah. I slept, you know, I slept in, um, because, <laughs> <laughs> Even though I wasn't expending so much energy on the physical side mm -hmm. so much as I was spending a lot of energy on my mental side. Yeah. So there was a lot of um, release. Mm. There was a lot of, you know, I won't say that it was always draining, but it wasn't always sustaining, <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know, it didn't always feel like I was gaining. Sometimes it felt like this is mm. just the remaining, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> There were times where, um, you know, I had really deep dived into my mind. It took me back to my childhood. Oh, yeah. Hey, it the realizations. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, cool. It took me back to my childhood, like in, in many ways, 
one of the ways was like you were saying not just the realization but the imagination <gasps> like mm -hmm. the imagination where it is able to go and how it is able to flow like so effortlessly how we can create worlds within worlds within worlds within worlds in here mm -hmm. that that appeared to me again and i hadn't felt that i hadn't been on that wavelength mm -hmm. for years it had been years since i had ventured into that realm of infinite possibility yeah. You yeah. know, like uh, like Willy Wonka, like pure, I was gonna say, you like Willy Wonka. Pure imagination. <laughs> yeah. Pure ima imagination. You know. What a pure imagination. Pure, pure, pure. Like I was living out so many things. There were portions of time where I wasn't so connected with the breath, but I was off in in so many different realms and realities. And then there were times where, I mean it might have been a defense mechanism of my mind i conjured up like a, i conjured up like a couch and like a, <laughs> a, like a, that seems very a, physical as well you did very well to conjure that i had a, i conjured up a room <laughs> with a couch and a therapist in this room in my mind wow. and oh. i started talking i'm telling you i don't know if i told anybody else this i might have maybe told one person but I conjured up a whole therapy session in my mind wow. and I was speaking to, you know, a familiar, like a person, mm -hmm. and I was t telling them my deepest, darkest mm -hmm. secrets, like everything that I can't, like everything that I was not allowing myself to be vulnerable enough, to be open enough, wow. to be, to, to tell anybody else. I was telling myself in here, and it was just such a warm and welcoming space that I created for myself. And tears were coming down. I was getting so emotional, Alice. Tears were coming down my eyes because I was admitting things that they were still there. They hadn't gone anywhere. They were just waiting for me to acknowledge them. Yes. Like they were just waiting on me to, to speak to them. And I, I didn't speak them with my mouth. I spoke them you know, with, with my consciousness. So it was just so profound. I, yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't necessarily need to be articulated, like you say, right? You know, it just, it needs to be acknowledged as a truth yeah. that part of you has believed that it's been maybe hidden or cast aside or what a, what a, oh, wow. That's so, I can't even find a word. I can't even find an adjective <laughs> to finish that sentence. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah. yeah, I had experiences like that. I didn't conjure the wonderful room to make it as comfortable as what yours sounds. But uh, I, like, I know I had this major epiphany on day, it was only the second day. Mm. It was only the second day, but it was, there was a stream of visions and thoughts mm -hmm. that just polluted my mind from the first sitting and would return every sitting that uh, and and continue to do so for a few days but it was on day two that i started to really ask myself i'm going okay why do you keep bringing mind why are you bringing this up you're clearly bringing it up for a reason and i know yes there is distraction here but there's also presumably you're seeking resolve mm -hmm. and i had a similar experience where it was like i was me myself and i therapist and, and patient and mediator going through timelines and repetitions and and patterns mm -hmm. that were trying to find completion and solace and finally when it, it was almost like the penny dropped as to why a certain behavior or a certain pattern kept repeating that it was this complete white blissful pure almost like what they described samadhi to be like i wouldn't want to be as arrogant to assume that's what it was but almost like that moment happened and then it kind of it released on such a level that the charge went so then when those because those thoughts continued to come back that same kind of dynamic and experience continued to come back but each time it happened i was able to then return to my breath no problem and a different avenue would come off it, a different street, a different road, you know? And then I'd be like, okay, let's wrap this up, let's wrap this up, let's tie up that loose end. And then, zoom, you know? 
it, like you said to me before I went, it's like surgery for the mind, yeah. you know? Really beautiful way of expressing that. Wow. Uh, wow. I mean, I'm so, I'm so glad that you, it takes courage. Yeah. It takes courage, you know, to, to allow yourself to go through that and mm. to, to grow through that, like to allow yourself to, to release, to surrender and yeah. to let go. Because there's, at a certain point you realize there's nothing to hold on to. No, no one's coming to save you. No one's coming to <laughs> save you, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> You're in it, you know, You're in it. Like till the yeah, finish. Stop seeking, yeah. yeah, stop seeking it. Yeah, it's like, this can, you, like we can do this the easy way or the hard way. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and yet the irony is is that the easy way is the hard way. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's the big irony. That's that's the you know, that's uh, the cat twenty two. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. How was it for you being Silent. So, what I what I want to share is what was really interesting. And I start. I think we started by talking about this a little bit earlier. One of the women in the room with me. So, in in the room that I was in, there was four beds. Only three of them were occupied. Mm -hmm. An adjoining room with two beds, um, and then you know a lot of other rooms and beautiful, beautiful, beautiful grounds. And um, one of the girls had already done the past a couple of months ago elsewhere, and she said. I hope it doesn't seem rude, but I am completely going to, um, I'm going to ignore you. I'm not going to make eye contact. When we go into noble silence, I'm not going to make eye contact with you because I found, well, no, she was saying that the last place they were, they emphasized, do not make eye contact with anyone. And they didn't emphasize that here. They just said, you just, you know, you're not going to speak. You'll notice there's no radio system and all that. But what was really interesting is as soon as, as soon as, as soon as certain people started making eye contact with each other, the, the ability to maintain noble silence for some was incredibly challenged and some broke it. And I know for me that when I made eye contact with someone, it was almost as though, you know, if they were walking past, I was then kind of, part of me was conscious going, oh, if I don't look at them now, are they going to get upset? Are they going to take it personally? Mm -hmm. You know, if I, if I go and sit in the meditation room, am I going to, is my mind going to stay in the focus that I'm learning and, and uh, attempting to attain? Or is it now going to jump over to that person to check how they're doing? Right. And so I wonder how you experienced that when you did yours. And, and were people making eye contact? And if so, did you find that there was a connection that wanted to try and establish whilst you were in the process of you know releasing and uncovering and going through the layers of your mind and and everything that was coming up for you and you know or, or, or just no <laughs> there was only um i think there was only one person that i did make eye contact with occasionally and it's yeah. my brother my brother sunrise so oh, sunrise so you know sunrise <laughs> I've seen I've seen the name I think on Instagram. I've seen it somewhere. Yeah. I don't know him. Yeah. But I know that I recognize it when you say that. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I went there with um so it was me. Tall guy. Yeah. Well yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I mean you're like, tall uh, as well, to be we're, fair, almost, so. <laughs> we're almost like the same height. Yeah, we're kinda like right there. So it was me, it was Sunrise, Celeste, mm. Tiber, mm. and Raj. So it was five of us. We mm -hmm. drove there in one vehicle from, from Utah, from uh, Salt Lake City to Lava Hot Springs in Idaho. Mm -hmm. So it was all five of us there meditating with the rest of the people. Right. And, but Sunrise and I, I were probably the only ones that, that I made con contact with very occasionally. And it was only like, um, like maybe right after the meditation when he got up and he stretched yeah. and he like... <laughs> You know, stretch. He would look over at me, and he would he would give a quick smile. You know, like like a quick smile, like you know, like we made it. You know, and, it's like um, one done. Yeah, like this is the thing. Because afterwards, 
it was like we knew him and i we know after go going through that like we're we're no longer friends yeah like we're we're bro brothers yeah you know like we're family now after yeah, it's, going, it's hard to describe isn't it though it's like it's 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 hard to describe it. to someone like it it's it once again it's experiential we just you know? knew it like like, like i care like, about these people yeah it was like we we gave we gave each other a look and through that look you realize like once we make it out of this <laughs> we family you know yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. You know, there's no escaping like, that now <laughs> we are locked in you know like you know and i know mm -hmm. that you know you know like you know we, we do you know yeah no. so that was that was the <laughs> only time but everybody else they kind of either look down mm. to the side or mm. just kind of pass by and just you know they they honored that noble silence yeah. they honored the no contact they honored just keeping giving you your chi space you yeah. know giving you your your energy room yeah yeah your energy room i like that mm -hmm. i like that when did you when was noble silence lifted for you it was lifted, uh, I believe, right after day 10, or there was just a point, it was either like day 10 or 11, because we stayed there, the 11th day was when we left, I believe. Yeah, mm -hmm. we yeah. left on day 11. Yeah. So then it, it was, yeah, right then, the day before, it was lifted. And it, there was a sign right in front of the meditation hall when we left the meditation that told us noble silence has now been lifted. Oh. Yeah. So oh, that was nice. our signal okay. that, that we could talk now, that we could oh. talk. So after that, every time we were in the dining hall, it was just, you heard everybody, like everybody was letting it all out. Like they yeah. were just, <laughs> their whole experience. Yeah, we were all finally chatting and, you know, what's your name, what's your name, you yeah. know? And like getting to know each other for the first time. We've been living with each other for 10 days and we didn't yeah. know each other's name, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. It was just the feeling like um, you, you, we've known each other. Like we, mm. we've grown to know each other on such an intimate level yeah. that, that did not require language. Mm -mm. You know, like there's another language behind our language that we don't always tap into, that we don't realize is that, like you said, you're telepathic, mm. you know about this. So, you know, I can only imagine what it was like for that, you know, for you on that level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I found it really fascinating because when Noble Silence was lifted for us, it was depending on how you counted the days mm -hmm. because people arrived middle of the Friday. Okay. Um, so I counted that as, as day zero. Um, and I think they did at the center as well. They counted it as day zero for somewhere. Some counted it as one. But the Noble Silence for us was lifted on the Sunday um, mm -hmm. after the afternoon, I think it was the afternoon group meditation. Mm -hmm. And I stayed in that room meditating. And I was like, I don't know that I'm ready to be surrounded by so much, so much voice, so much sound, so much expression, like outward expression. Cause that's the thing, isn't it? When you're, when you're not speaking and, and I'm sure like maybe afterwards remind us to come back to what is noble about noble silence. Cause I, I feel like that's going to be an interesting thing to go into if, if time permits here, but it's, I was like, I'm not ready at this point, at the end of this meditation to walk outside where everyone is now laughing and, you know, like you say, what's your name? What are hearing people's voices for the first time? Yeah. Like, that's the interesting thing as well. So like, I'd see some of the men go to ask, uh, go to sit at the front in the interview. And I'd, of course, I'd hear a little bit of their voice because, the, you know, we were sat close together. The rooms were close together. You know, if you're, you're hearing, it's your hearing. So I could somewhat hear people's voices, but then to hear it properly out yeah. loud when they're speaking a little bit more with, um, you know, with a little bit more gumption, mm -hmm. right? So me and my, my roommate, we stayed in the meditation hall along with a couple of um, seasoned meditators because we were all intermixed. So out of the 30 or so women, there was, there was a woman at the front of the room. Oh my gosh, she moved me so much because she'd walk in and in this, in the meditation hall that we were in, the room that the women were in, there was, there was nothing really in it other than the cushions. Mm -hmm. The room that the men were in, there was the photographs of the 
um, of the lady and the gentleman, the, the, the great teachers that, um, that had created the IMC that had, you know, that had, yeah. And they passed away a few years back and this one woman, she'd moved me so much because every time she'd go to the doorway where you can see in and see the, like the altar behind and, and she'd just, she'd bow to them and she'd take a moment and she'd look at the photo of the woman, the great teacher, you know, and then she'd walk a couple of steps and where there was like a window in the wall and she'd do the same thing. And I was like, wow, you know, but anyway, she'd been meditating for 50 years doing that same thing at that same location. That was that anyway, not the point of why I'm saying all this, but me and my roommate, we stayed for 10 more minutes in the room. And then when we exited, people had dispersed a little bit and we walked straight out. We didn't, we still continued our noble silence just for a little bit. And then we literally like you and your brother, we just turned to each other and we smiled and we just started laughing. And she was like, hi. And I'm like, hi. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, it's so cool to talk yeah. to you. And I'm like, I know. And she's like, I feel like I'm going to meditate though for a bit longer and be in silence a bit more. I was like, me too. <laughs> so even though we were made to speak, we were like, we don't want to speak just yet. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. it's, it's a lot. I don't want to drop into mindless, right. you know, mindless communication. Right. Where someone straight into, you know, just talking about random things. I'm like, I have so much, so much more feeling now behind right. the words right. and the connection. They and it's like you say, you can't, you can't articulate what it's like to have spent 10 days without ever speaking to someone in a room mm -hmm. and having that connection in the meditation space and in that room and then to actually say hello. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, if you're ever near where I live, you can visit. I got a spare room. You can kick in here, you know, come yeah. and come and visit. And she used to live right near where I lived previously. Oh, wow. So that was really funny. It was literally, she was like living in a town where I used to live a few years back and I was like well you have the most beautiful pagoda there do you visit the pagoda in the town that you live and she's like sometimes I'm like I used to love that pagoda <laughs> it's fascinating how the universe brings people together as well it in is any room and that girl was in the room that I was in and we both lived in the same town right it's a commonality right you know right no coincidence yeah yeah Never. It was meant. Never. It was meant to be, <laughs> you know. I definitely say, you know, as well. I echo that, Alice, yeah. because my roommate, you know, he was the real strong, silent type. Mm. He was a, you know, guy, full head of hair, full beard, you yeah. know, like mustache all the way down, you know, very oh, rugged, very oh, like wow. outdoorsy. Yeah. You know, yeah. he was he was one of the only guys that. Even though it was freezing cold outside, it was snowing and like there was just, you know, snow capped everywhere. He would be off, you know, he would walk off into the into the distance and really just get out of Dodge in between the breaks while yeah. some people were in their rooms and kind of huddled in the covers and kind of warming up for the yeah. next meditation. He was one of the guys that would just throw on a jacket and put on his hiking boots and just keep walking, you know. Yeah. And so wow. I was next to this guy and this Vipassana, this 10 days, yeah. it gave me so much compassion for, oh. for the things that we, we don't know. Like, we really don't know mm -hmm. what people around us are going through. No. You know, like you, you think you know, but a lot of times you really don't know, you like really you can don't. imagine, but you just don't, you don't know. So the reason why I say this is he had like, um, he had like a diary, it was like a journal, not like huh? a journal. We weren't allowed journals, oh. like we weren't allowed oh, yeah. to have them, but he did have like a, like a piece of paper. I think it was the, the paper that they gave us in the beginning that listed out the guidelines yes. and the rules and the regulations mm -hmm. and you know, fasting is prohibited and all of that stuff, you know, that, that paper. <laughs> so he used that paper and, you know, every now and then I would come back to the room and I would see him like, like put something up. Yeah. And then 
as, as the days went by, I saw him and, you know, we kind of got to know each other, even though we weren't talking. And then yeah. he just, he figured, you know, he's not going to tell anybody. So he would be writing, you know, he would be scribbling in the corner yeah. and he would be writing, like furiously writing, like really, really just into it. And then we'd go to the next med meditation and we'd come back and, you know, he'd pull it out again and he'd be writing and then he'd put it back up. And then sometimes he would leave the notebook out, like he would leave the paper sitting there on the window seal because he was by yeah. the window. Oh, and, you know, that's curiosity. True. Trust. That's a beautiful trust, though, isn't it? Wow. Yeah. So now curiosity. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about trust, let's jump to curiosity. Now, curiosity. <laughs> so, so I would come in, right? Let's say yeah. the, the book is right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I come in. <laughs> Just in that cool swagger that you got. Right? I come in, I see it. I'd be like, okay. okay. <laughs> You know, and then one time I come by and I'd be like, <laughs> you know, I look at it. And so what I saw there, I won't say what, what was there, oh, sure. but what I saw was someone that was going through things they could not talk about Absolutely. and that, that he was asking himself so many questions like, why am I like this? Why is life like this? Why can't things be different? Why can't I find joy? Why can't things be better? Like, why can't, why can't, why not? Why, why, why? There were so many questions of why. Mm. And it just, it completely changed the whole dynamic because I, I completely empathized with him. And I realized that, you know, this is somebody that, you know, even though you see the exterior, yeah. you see what's on the outside, there's a lot on the inside, you know? Yeah. There's so much going on inside that he may never open up, you know, and, and bring these things out, but at least for him, I feel that, I pray that he, he was able to find what he was looking for because it, it seemed to me that so many people from all walks of life, we're coming to that Vipassana for very different reasons. Very, very different and very, very different reasons. Okay. Like not everybody was there for the same reason. Not everybody was there for Nirvana or Samadhi or, you know, mm. learning this or learning that or releasing this or rele like some people were there for very different reasons. Yeah. And it let me know that we just don't know. Yeah. We just don't know. We think that what, you know, we think, Am I the only one that feels this way? And then some people think, oh, I thought everybody thought like that. You know, yeah. you've, you've heard those people that say, well, I thought that was, you know, I thought everybody had that experience. I thought everybody, but it's not, it's not everybody's I experience. And then you say some, meet somebody that thinks no one can understand what I'm going through, but somebody might understand what you're going through. Somebody might do. Yeah. So. Oh, Jerome, I got goosebumps all over here. It's like you're moving me to tears right now. It's, it's, <laughs> it's very, very moving. It's very touching. Because it is, it's true. I, they didn't stipulate if we could have a notebook or not. Like they didn't, they said no reading material, nothing spiritual, nothing religious, nothing from any other practice. Yeah. Obviously no, no fasting, none of that stuff. No yoga, no exercise, really that's vigorous and you know and um but they didn't stipulate overly about a notebook or a journal so i was journaling okay and okay. and so like when you're saying that i like i completely get it because like there's many reasons that i went to the past that i've wanted to do one for such a long time mm -hmm. but there was an emotional drive that got me there for this particular one like i booked it i was like i need to book it because it's going to help me heal this emotion and um, this experience that I'm having that I'm struggling to heal, I'm seeking everywhere within myself, outside of myself to heal it, and I can't do it. Mm. So I know that I need to be in a space like Vipassana. And even though, even though I didn't have the, the massive kind of like emotional, like a lot of people were, were of course, releasing many tears, mm -hmm. you know, and... I feel like I didn't need to do that at this time around, but the revelations that occurred and the, like I found what I was looking for at the Vipassana, but it was just, it, it was so interesting because I'm sure that that gentleman that you spoke of, I'm sure that he found what he was looking for because it's, 
the mental realizations, the the development of the experience, you know, all of these things that are going to come from a continued practice and from what you've experienced there, that, that's going to develop and that's going to continue. But don't underestimate what 10 days I'm sure even less but what 10 days can do for someone that is seeking something from an emotional level the Vipassana right. and the Anapana especially the but both of those combined for me I was like if if only if only the world knew the power of this container there would ne never be struggle or strife wow. again you know wow if only people knew you know yeah you know? yeah yeah sunrise sunrise was saying he said uh if he was like you know leader if he was a leader in the world like he would make it mandatory he said <laughs> he would make yeah it, he said it, he said for everyone <laughs> he said he would make it mandatory at least like once a year or something <laughs> like that for for everybody to at least do a 10 day you mm. know at least once yeah. in their life you know that, but then you have to be on your volition otherwise you yeah. wouldn't be receptive right yeah. and that's the that's the conundrum i was like why aren't they teaching this in school and i'm like because if you make the big people do something they're not going to want to do exactly it. exactly so yeah yeah but yeah. the world would be completely different it, it would, would be a different world yeah it would wow oh my goodness i've got i'm just tingling all over <laughs> you know? And before you say Anicca, I'm just like, I know, I'm just observing. I'm just. No, observing. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, um, I think I took home the whole library as well. They had some books um, because they'd, they'd authored some books. So the teachers there had authored some books and mm -hmm. uh, translated some and that. And you could, um, you could purchase uh, some of the books and mm -hmm. it was from where the discourses were from as well and some of the texts. And I was like, out of everything that I've ever done, this is the one thing so far that I literally want to take the whole library home to study, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And what I thought was beautiful as well, Alice, mm -hmm. is that, you know, like you talked about the volunteers, yeah. there was yeah. all the stuff about volunteer, volunteer. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that really touched me was the fact that it was free, yeah. you know? It was free like it was free of charge they said someone already paid for you wow like, someone already paid for you wow. you're, you're free it's free wow. you know wow. so like you know like everything that they received like the donations the the volunteers the people that serve the people who have you know been there before the participant like everything was free and wow. it was given to you and it was like you're getting all of this because someone else has already paved the way yeah. for you, you know, someone that came before, yeah, they've already oh, paid, paid for your seat. Yeah. Absolutely. That that's so yeah. profound. Yeah. Wow. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's true though. It's true. So one of the, was it a participant or was it a friend afterwards? I, I don't quite recall. Um, someone, someone had, said you know about um yeah no they, they, they were saying about you know the i think oh, it was it was one of the participants it was someone that i shared a room with and she was saying about the quality of the food and how you know because they 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 didn't have a mandatory fee or anything like you say it was free right no fee it's free but there was a recommended donation if you were able mm -hmm. And that was to cover the cost of the food each day. So there was like for 10 days, you know, of this much for, for whatever, but don't feel obliged if you can't, don't worry, okay. you know? And, and it was one of those where afterwards my roommate was like, do you think that's, you know, do you think it was the donations? Cause people, a lot of people literally would donate beforehand um, at this particular place they would donate something beforehand that the food was that good and I'm like I don't think it mattered I think the donations literally were just for your own conviction I don't think it had any impact on the food it would have been like that whether you donated or whether you didn't because I know that when I was signing in the lady before me who got that before me um 
she wasn't able to donate just technology like not because she didn't want to but just technology so they'd already had all the food and everything like that the woman that was signing her in she was like that's okay well don't stress about it we want you to this is your for personal experience i'm not gonna you know i'm not gonna chase you for anything like that don't worry about it it's already paid for like you say it's already paid for yeah. all is well yeah but it's funny because by the end of it i'm like can I give you more money here? Like, you, like have more. <laughs> let's pay for more places. Let's, you know, let's offer more in advance if you're able. Let's offer more. I'm like, here, just take it, <laughs> you know. And not from a prideful place or anything, but just because I'm like, I was in such awe of the, the humility and the generosity. Mm -hmm. I don't. I've never experienced generosity like that. Yes. Yes. Speaking of generosity, yeah. just while we're on that topic. Yeah. So I told you about the gentle giant, you know, our the gentle giant, yeah. yeah. our te teacher, he would come, you know, he would come from the place wherever he was in his dorm, because the teachers had their own little house. And then mm -hmm. we were in separate dormitories, but the teachers had their own little building that they were in. And so he would walk in, you know, silently take off of his his beanie, you know, it was cold mm -hmm. out there. And yeah, then he would, yeah. you know, sit on his meditation mat. And afterwards, after the meditation, he would go off somewhere up the hill. And I wouldn't know where he was going, yeah. you know. But one day, I remember that I was looking out the window because there were a whole bunch of, uh, there were men there that were also working on construction. Mm. They were building a new Dhamma hall or a new meditation hall oh, yeah. that was yeah. going to be even bigger wow. than the one that we were in. So the one that we were in was housing like, you know, 30 of us. The one that they were building was going to house like maybe 100 people, you know, like like a big one. And so I would see these, you know, men working the construction. They were doing different things during the day while we were going down to the hall and meditating and up to the dormitory to take naps. One time, Alice, I looked out the window, right? <laughs> I looked out the window. And I see this guy up on the up on the roof of the new the new Dhamma Hall. Yeah. And, and he's like scraping snow. This guy is scraping, scraping ice and snow like yeah. off of the roof, right? And he's on the roof, like, you know, he could easily slide off of that thing. It could be, mm -hmm. you know, it could be bad because he's up there, right? But he's just on this thing and he's like just shoveling snow off of the rooftop. And then something, I took a double take and I was like, wait a minute, do I know him? He looked familiar, like for some reason, I don't know what, what, what it was, but I was like, I don't think I know, I can't, what? And I looked closer and my eyes lit up. I said, oh my God, that's our meditation teacher. And he's standing right there he's shoveling snow off the roof in between, in between. <laughs> yes yeah i you know what it, it must be a buddhist thing i tell you i i saw our meditation teacher i saw our teacher with muddy knees and muddy pants because he was holding a wheelbarrow helping the gardeners who were helping the volunteers who were taking care of the garden yeah in the half an hour break, in like in the hour or half an hour break or whatever between sittings. Yeah. And then other times he was coming out of the pagoda having either meditated or led a meditation for um, some of the volunteers and for mm -hmm. the staff there. And, you know, he was nonstop. And it just, it made me laugh this one day when someone was saying um, about, you know, not getting to sleep. Uh, it, they didn't get to sleep at nine o'clock. They were awake till whatever time. And, you know, and, just like so nonchalantly, he was just like, I need you. Sleep is overrated. What a legend is literally like, he's like 10 hours with us, plus the online course, plus yeah. the volunteers in the pagoda meditating, doing his own stuff and leading them, plus gardening. And occasionally you might see him with a cup of coffee yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or a cup of tea or whatever. And I'm just going, this is like, and, you know, we got the honor of going into the pagoda because it's too small to have the students in, mm -hmm. the amount of students that do the course. And apparently they used to let the students in there. They used to have in the pagoda. Yeah. 
but we got the honor of going in and, and actually having a little look and it's so beautiful in there, so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And we see each of the cells, right? That's what they call the little rooms that they call them the little cells. And mm -hmm. you know, you'd, you'd have like maybe five people, or eight people meditating in there mm -hmm. in each one. And then we saw the teachers, right? We saw the disciples chamber and we were like, we knew it was his mm -hmm. because it had all these books. <laughs> it is a simple cushion all these books because of course he's always given discourses he's translated yeah. from Burmese or from Pali or, or whatever the language into English as well you know he's got I'm like where does he find the time right. and then he's taking questions privately from us when we catch him in the courtyard and I'm like this guy has figured out that time doesn't exist. Or he's figured out how to really expand. He blows it up like a balloon and he's going, look at all this extra time yeah. we've got now. Like, there is no way anyone else would yeah. do that. Yeah. You know, generosity is... Yeah, that self-sacrifice, you know? Yeah. Yeah, for the, love of, for the love of the students and the love of their own, their awakening as well, you know? It's, it was just, it was so beautiful. Yeah. So much patience. And that, that actually, it speaks even louder, you know, mm -hmm. because I don't know if everybody else seen him up there. Like, yeah. that's not something that oh. he, he wouldn't brag about it. He wouldn't No one about would it. know. No right? one else yeah. could know that, you know, this guy is up there doing So, like you said, like these selfless acts, these, these acts of self-sacrifice, of service, yeah. of purpose, of just meaningful, just for the other person yeah. it's it's not even something like for them it's not even a badge of honor it's not like something that they want to wear and show proudly it's just who they are it's, it's just who they are yeah yeah and it's not a facade it's not to earn right. anything specific they genuinely yeah. want to be doing right. that and i was just like and each time the greeting as well that when he would see like he'd leave you to it like, as he was walking by you know, most people obviously know in contemplation, meditation or whatever, but then if, if he felt or saw someone look up at him, he'd, he'd always stop and he'd be like, do you have a question? <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it was just, it was always, it was so beautiful. <laughs> it was just so, the patience, I've never seen yeah. it like that. Not from anyone, not from anyone proclaiming to be a teacher and he would never call himself that, but that is what he is, <laughs> you know? Yeah. so cool the, the eternal student <laughs> the et yeah. yeah yeah the eternal student yeah it's very very cool to see wow, mm. wow. well alice <laughs> thank you so much for this thank you for this you know this has been amazing time just flies by when i'm talking to you you know <laughs> we travel yeah we do travel uh, it's been a joy it's been an honor and i love connecting with you Jerome. so thank you so much thank you for suggesting it it's yeah. Beautiful idea. I'm going to see if you know whether we can download this from Instagram because I'll send it to you because I think I'll get it up on YouTube as well. I think a few people would like to like to hear about this. For anyone that is watching that is in the States, where was your Vipassana retreat? If anyone wants to find it, where can they find it? Or how do they, you know, how do they find it? I know that there's a maybe dhamma something.org. There's a website mm -hmm. that you can find. Uh, Maybe type in, you know, Vipassana in, in Google. But I know, yeah. like, um, there's a website, I think, dhammasomething.org. But, yeah, you can find different ones. And like you said, it's international, you know. Yeah. It's international, so it's all <laughs> over the world. Yeah, they got meditation centers everywhere. And there, there are new ones that are popping up all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, All the time. Yeah. The one that I was at was in Headington, if anyone's in the UK. Okay. Obviously, there's many of them, like Jerome just said, mm -hmm. but I went to the International Meditation Center, and that's, I think, is just the internationalmeditationcenter.org. Cool. Um, cool. And that's in Headington, and they have, um, they do Vipassana the third week of every month. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, but if you're anywhere else around the world, I know the I know the IMC that I went to. That is in different countries, and like Jerome said, just type in Vipassana, type in Dharma, um, dot org or, or whatever. You'll find somewhere if it's calling to you. Yeah. And if not, we're glad that you stay tuned and enjoy the story. Thank you for the beautiful comments and all the yes. love. Yes, all the love. All, all the love. love. <laughs> <laughs>
How did you do that? Did you see all the hearts come out of your screen then? <laughs> did, so, did someone press a heart or did you literally just do that and it just went boop and loads of hearts came out? That was just unreal time. Hey, congrats. <laughs> congrats on your Oh, look at that. Congrats. Look, congratulations. To you. you got some magic going on with your screen, Mister. <laughs> like, what is that? <laughs> like, you, okay, right, stop, stop it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Till next time, Anisha. Until next time. Anisha. 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 Changing. Changing. <laughs> Take, care. Take care. Take <laughs> care.